at Nettlebed in Oxfordshire, they had a race, and the prize was a firkin of ale. Uh, that caught the imagination of the national press, and such was the enthusiasm that next year there were three or four engines. And that's what really started the movement. Now we're going to start with our miniatures. Now these, I, I get told off if I call them models, they are not. They are miniature steam, they work exactly the same way as the full size engines. Um, and we'll start to talk about scales. So scales is how many inches on this would be uh, a foot in real life. So coming round, we've, all, we've already spoken about ERF, Edward Richard Foden. Here we've got a Foden uh, tractor, Ballast Box tractor, absolutely beautifully turned out. Um, and I'm going to suggest it's six inch scale. So six inch scale. Now, was this built, I do like the beer holder. I take, that, take it that was on the specification. Yeah, well, yeah. So this one, have you built it? Was it built for you? So from castings or from a kit or? Yeah, castings and drawings, yeah. Castings and drawings, absolutely wonderful. So buy the castings, machine them, put them all together just as it would be. Absolutely stunning, fantastic, thank you. Another Foden, over tight because the engine is actually over the, uh, in the front, so a locomotive type boiler there. And we are scale. Four and a half inches to the foot, built by somebody else, I believe, but a beautiful trailer on the back. And I'm not going to ask you to back it around there because I know exactly what you're going to do. <laughs> Put it on the front and I can do it, but not on the back. That, that, a, a drawbar trailer like that was um, proper British road hauling, a drawbar trailer on an A frame. They are like shoving string to reverse because they articulate in two places. This is lovely, six inch scale, thereabouts, four inch scale. So who, can, who made the cab? John Rett, model engineering. So you obviously did a few of them. Yeah. And what's underneath? Are you in the carriage, a, a, a scooter? So it's a five seat POS gearbox with an off power motor. Wonderful, absolutely lovely that Stanya, well done. I survived the scrapping scheme. Another Foden. Uh, come on, give us a clue. What scale? Hang on. What? Six inch scale, so half. The, what's all this glitter going on on the back? Hang on a minute. What's all this? Ah, I'm not going to read that out in public because I would not like to embarrass you, but I take it as another significant birthday. <laughs> Wonderful. Did you build this or, or was it built? Absolutely lovely, thank you. Moving down the scale a little bit, um, the wave at the crowd as you go past, cover up the, the, the eggs, I think. Another Foden, four and a half inch scale, wonderful. And he's not getting any cleaner on here, no. And little on the back, are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying it? Yeah. In the back there. Yeah. How old's your brother? You don't know? Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Lovely to see the youngsters getting involved. Agency driver on this one. So this is a, a Burrell compound engine. Boring scale. So compound engine uh, uses the steam once in the high pressure cylinder and then again in the low pressure cylinder, it was for efficiency, so Charles Burrell from down in Inspector. I, I think we can we, we could call this a, a Bixer. It's unique, it was built in 62 from scratch by a blacksmith John Welder. And uh, I've had him for 15 years now. Uh, we've done a lot of battling, sort of crankshaft bearings and bed cranks and new cylinder and all sorts of stuff. Oh good, and just absolutely unique. Oh yeah, there's not another one like it. Yeah. And it, it looks a little bit like a stationary steam engine on the top. Yeah, well it was. We think that the uh, original cylinder in motion came out of a motion parlour engine. You know, so I need to get cut off the ventilation and made it all fit onto the boiler. Wonderful. You, I know you have hours and hours of fun with it, don't you? Yeah. Moving down to uh, Suffolk now. 
Leafton, the Garrett, Richard Garrett and Sons. This is a single cylinder, four inch scale, four inch scale. So that only uses that only uses the, the steam one. They have a distinctive chuck to them. Dog loving it on the back of there. Alan Atkinson here with his five eight scale. I remember, and I didn't realise Alan, you you have got a new pooch. Yeah. Hello you. Oh, you're a big old boy, aren't you? What girl? Sorry, big old. Girl. What, 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 um, you could specify it as a timber tractor. WJ King were a very famous Southwest operator, quarry owner, contractor. They ran an awful lot of steam engines um, and an awful lot of, of, of vehicles. I went to the sale when they sold up. Another Garrett, six inch, 4DG, six inch. This one has the optional sunroof and air conditioning. A road locomotive this time. Road locomotive, the, the semi-cab on it to uh, cover the motion and the driver. The belly tank on there, the trailer on the back. Now, not generally, the trailer on the back will carry water because these are not very efficient at water, using water. John Fowler from Leeds. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I love the shovel. Come on, let's see the shovel again. So, there's the shovel. I don't, how, how do you get on when you need to strain vegetables and change this a Another phone. Oh, look at this coming round now. Another burrow, compound engine. That's one of the devices on there, I take it. We just need to have a word with this guy. This is a Stanley steam car. Now, an American contraption. Um, and this steam had been developed. This is probably what we'd be running about in now, isn't it? That's right, yes. So, so obviously electric, but now the impact. So, built in America, what year? 1970. 1970. Now, I can't smell coal. No, it's oil-fired. It works on kerosene with petrol for the pilot, cleaning the kerosene. And how long to raise steam? About half an hour. That's not too bad then, is it? A bit better than a bit better than a traction engine where you're at it all day. That's right. So a flash boiler in this rather than no, yeah, six hundred tubes in the boiler, a vertical boiler, and uh, under the bonnet, engines on the back, uh, onto the back axle, and uh, water tank in the middle. And we're reasonably quick. Oh yeah, capable about sixty miles an hour. Uh, but no brakes on the front, so it don't go back to that. <laughs> Six, absolutely stunning, absolutely lovely. See it here every year. Thank you so much for bringing round the ring. Capable of 60 miles an hour. Well, so that's our miniature. So let's let's get down to the the big stuff. And we have three really unusual engines with us this year. And I'm going to say unique. One of them is a complete pig to drive. I was talking to the owner this morning and he said it is a pig, but he's got his expert with him today. Uh, they're reversing into the arena. Built in... Oh, we're going to have the gate post out. Uh, I, mean, I was talking to the owner this morning, and on his uh, on his board he said it's uh, it is an interesting thing to drive, um, and you can see that they're they're struggling to get it into the arena, and it sort of makes you wonder that is this the reason they didn't continue to make them? So we go back to 1906. The story of the traction engine is quite interesting. Oh, another one coming in. 
just turned out the beer tent, I think, have you? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> so what we're manoeuvring now is a Davy Paxman. Very, very rare engine. There were only two of these ever built. This is the only one left in existence. It was built in 1906, one of two that were going to go to South America. Hence the strange chim chimney on there, uh, because they were originally built as straw burners. So they were going to burn straw and not coal, so that's a big Sparka restaurant there. Um, it's been about in preservation for quite a long time, but it is the first time I have ever seen it, and I've been doing this for far too many years. Um, so it's a single cylinder, it was converted at some stage into a portable engine, so that means it didn't drive itself, it was just used uh, on a belt and such like, uh, but it's been restored and brought to us here today. Um, the other one is, has, been, has been scrapped, uh, really unusually, he said it, the, the regulator, which is the accelerator, is really difficult to use, um, and it has a clutch on the flywheel, which again is very, very difficult. Just coming into the arena now, we have Harold Llewellyn. Harold Llewellyn is a Aveling and Porter showman's agent. So one of the, the, the things that the showman's agent is all the Christmas baskets. I'm trying to do a commentary here. All the twisted brass on it. So the showman's engine had three jobs. It would tow the fairground rides down the road. It would help to build the fairground rides up. And then when the ride was built up, they put a belt on it to the dynamo on the front, and that would provide the electric power. Now you can imagine going back in the early 1900s, when the travelling fair came to, uh, to Clitheroe or to, uh, to Chipping, for people to actually see electric light must have been absolutely amazing. Beautifully restored. Um, the big chimney on the top that's strapped to the roof is to move the, um, the, the smoke and the fumes away from the fair. Because obviously the last thing the Stover wanted was to get his customers to fill the dirt. The boat and wagon coming round behind that is three quarter scale. So not quite a miniature, but not quite. I'm right, three quarter scale? So three quarter scale. And, that, and that's the phone. Built as new, and you'll notice that it's got a, a registration number on the back, so that's registered to the road. The next one that's coming round, I, I, I can remember from years ago. Um, it's a little it's a little Aveling Porter built down in Rochester. We're due to the Richmond's work for an uh, Oakbridge Valley Water Company, the engineers department, known as Google, and it's the only engine I know that actually has a spectacle plate on it with the two eyeglasses in it. Brilliant. So if we go back to, if you go to Gisborne, uh, there was a guy who lived there, Tom Varley, um, rest in peace Tom, but his passion was to bring stuff back from Australia. Remember what we were the workshop of the world and we sent stuff all over again. Aveling Porter built down in Rochester and this is the Aveling Porter Colonial Wagon. Outback hauling, daily service, signature mudgee, whether that, where that is. Really, really rare. That's our second rare vehicle today. I don't think there's another Aveling Porter wagon in existence in the UK. Coming into the arena now is our third, more or less unique. There are, I think, another one or two, but this is our Built in Bedford, the Britannia Works is still there. We filled the plaque on the on the works door, and we filled with the ploughing engine. Re again, really, really rare. We might see a, a real, we will see a proper ploughing engine in the arena. So the ploughing engine, um, obviously, a traction engine is too big for um, general ploughing, direct ploughing. I'll get out of the way direct ploughing. So these use the wire rope to drag the plough uh, left and right. 
again, owned by Gordon Riggs and Todd Lewis. Quite interesting because the motion for this, the cylinder is actually at the back. So Dougal's coming round uh, and we've got the Avalon and Porter Colonial wagon. Then we have the first of our steamrollers. Steamrollers were the last steam vehicle that was um, in commercial use in, in Great Britain. I can remember in the 1960s uh, in Westmoreland, the Westmoreland steamroller would come to the roads around where I live, um, they'd put the tarmac down uh, and then roll it in. Um, generally the roller drivers, um, when, when the roller driver retired, the county councils retired the roller. And they're quite an interesting life, they tow a roller van behind them, um, so they'd arrive at a job with the roller van, they'd live in that roller van all week. Um, sometimes the wife went with them to do the cooking and the washing and such like. Um, and then on a Friday afternoon, they'd move it to the next place of work, maybe five or six miles down the road, and then get his motorbike or his push bike and cycle home, sheet the engine up, leave it for the weekend and then, and then come back to it. So John Fowler was a very famous um, engineer in Leeds. Um, not only did they make uh, um, rollers, they also made ploughing engines that we're going to see, agricultural engines, road hauling engines and so on and so forth. Following that, beautifully restored by the Fail family. An agricultural engine. Uh, so, the di so the difference is um, an agricultural engine will be used for general haulage, for timber haulage, uh, so on and so forth. The uh, road locomotive, slightly faster, belly tank under the front for the extra water, but the agricultural engine would be used for haulage, um, for um, winching, uh, and so on and so forth. So I don't know who's driving today. Warren's on the steering wheel. Josh doesn't trust him to, to drive it, obviously. And they're catching up with the... Uh, with a little roller there. And that's a Ransoms, Sims and Jeffreys from Ipswich. Again, a single cylinder, I think owned by Jack Waterworth for many, many, many years. Um, now Warren and Josh have got hold of it and they've done all sorts of work to it, smoke box, boiler work, tubes and so on and so forth. So they have us been following that round. One of the biggest class of traction engines you, 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 you can see. And it is again from John Fowler from the Steam Plough Works. So John Fowler was um, renowned for revolutionising the way that the land would work. These engines would work in pairs um, and uh, would have the full crew with them. They would have a living van, they would go from job to job. And if you notice underneath, it's got a huge winding drum. So that huge winding drum will be used to winch the implement, whether it was a plough or a cultivator or a dredger, across the field. So you would put one on the headland at one side of the field, one on the headland at the other side of the field, and pull the implement across. Now working in East Anglia and such like, it was quite difficult to uh, see the other side of the field, you can imagine a winter morning, uh, misty and frosty, so they would actually do it by signal. And there are stories that the plough arrives at the other end uh, and there's no ploughman on it because he's been thrown off it as it's been winched across the field. Absolutely stunning. It's not quite the biggest one, the Z series, that's the BB, uh, I believe. Uh, the Z series was even bigger. But you look at the wire rope on that, absolutely huge. So again, we've got a, a road locomotive there, S and CJ Harrison, moving in front of the line. That's another Fowler road locomotive, uh, and that's owned up in uh, Cumberland. And if you wanted to do a steam experience, brought in furnace, they are the guys to go and have a word with. And I believe, and they might tell me that I'm wrong, and I often am, but I believe they took that over one of the high passes in the Lake District, over half knots. If you look at the, the ploughing engine as it goes past, you'll see on the near side front wheel 
where the wire rope has been pulled into the wheel. So what would happen 